this video, we'll talk about Jerome Bruner and we'll apply his constructivist theories to the subject of music. Who is Jerome Bruner? Jerome Bruner was an American psychologist who through his study of children and cognitive development identified three modes of understanding, advocated for discovery learning over direct instruction, and believed organizing instruction using a spiral curriculum makes complex subjects accessible to any age learner. Like Piaget and Vygotsky, Bruner's theories are constructivist. He disagreed, however, with Piaget that stages were bound by an individual's age. His theories were heavily influenced by social psychologist Vygotsky with an emphasis on the environment's role in teaching and learning. The spiral curriculum is related to Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. In a 2015 interview for the American Psychological Association, Bruner said this about his constructivist theories. I wanted to have a psychology that somehow was not just about what came in through the senses right here and now. On the other hand, I knew those were the components of a more complicated behavior, and I turned in the direction of wanting to know about our capacity for registering the world. The world was there, and we brought our input and processing of that input. In this video, we'll take a look at one of three elements of Jerome Bruner's theory as we could apply it to music the modes of understanding, discovery learning, and spiral curriculum. We'll focus on modes of understanding for music. The first mode of understanding is inactive. Notice that it is spelled with an E. Not inactive, as in you're not active, but inactive, meaning muscle memory, or through action and movement. The inactive mode of understanding applied to music means that we are looking at demonstrating our knowledge of music through the music skills such as singing and moving and playing instruments. This violinist will demonstrate her knowledge of pitch and rhythm for the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We could also have children sing this song to demonstrate their knowledge of those pitches and rhythms. Or we could have children move to the song. Here's a video of a child responding to musical sounds and demonstrating through the body moving to music the inactive understanding of pitch. Here we go. The next mode is the iconic mode of understanding. The iconic mode is represented through visual or auditory icons. Bruner says that the iconic mode are things as they seem. What does that mean? Images that represent musical sounds or sounds that represent specific music concepts. Let's take a closer look. Here's a picture that represents the song Frere Jaca. As I sing it, think about the music concepts that are represented by the images you see. Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Sona le matina, sona le matina, ding ding don, ding ding don. If you know the song Frere Jaca, you know that it's in French, and that the story is Frere Jaca is the name of a person. Dormez vous is are you sleeping? Vous is the word for you, dorme is about sleep. Sona le matina is matina is the morning and the bells are ringing in the morning. Morning bells are ringing. And then the last one is the sound of the bells. So these icons represent the language, the meaning of the lyrics in this song. 
because you can see Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. You can see Frère Jacques waking up as the eyes open up. Sonne le matina, and now we see the bells. Sonne le matina, ding, dang, dong, ding, dang, dong. So far, these icons represent the meaning of the words. In other words, the language subject rather than the music subject. Language concepts rather than music concepts. What about music concepts? What music concepts are represented by this song? One thing you might have noticed is that there's an image for each beat of the song. Watch. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. So each image represents the beat. What other music concepts are represented in this song? You may have also noticed that there's an aspect of form. Each line is a complete phrase of the song. You also can see that meter is identified by showing the downbeat with a change in how these images are colored in. Let's review what we found. There are language icons in terms of showing what the lyrics mean. There are also music icons that represent the music concepts of beat, form, phrase, and meter. Let's do another one. These images represent the song Bounce High, Bounce Low. As I sing, think about the music concepts that are represented. Bounce high, bounce low, bounce the ball to Shiloh. Bounce high, bounce low, bounce the ball to Shiloh. Here's another one. Think about the music concepts that are represented. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, me and my Donny Gal are bound to go. I'll sing it again. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, me and my Donny Gal are bound to go. See if you can discover what music concepts are represented in this video. Fair warning, the quality of this recording is somewhat poor. So far, all of the music examples of the iconic mode of understanding have been represented through visual icons. But remember that Bruner said that the iconic mode of understanding includes auditory icons. What is an auditory icon? Auditory icons are sounds that represent specific music concepts. Auditory icons for music include solmization for rhythm. If you've ever used rhythm syllables to help you read rhythms, such as takadimi, 
or do, do, day, do, day, do, which came from Ed Gordon, or traditional syllables such as ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, then you've used an auditory icon for music. The solmization that we've used for pitch, such as solfege, is also an auditory icon for music. Let's move to the next mode of understanding, symbolic. The symbolic mode of understanding are abstract symbols. We think beyond images and use symbols such as words or numbers. In music, we will consider standard notation and other symbols that abstractly represent musical sounds as the symbolic mode of understanding. Music concepts for the symbolic mode of understanding include standard notation and stick notation. I'll show an example of stick notation later in this video. We also have language concepts for music at the symbolic mode of understanding. We use words for articulation and dynamics as well as lyrics. We also use numbers for time signature and endings. We also use dynamic markings with letters. There are other symbols that we use in music such as coda signs that are abstract symbols that represent the music that we make. Here's some standard notation for twinkle twinkle little star. The treble clef is, is symbolic. Our key signature has symbolic. There's our time signature. This standard notation on a staff is all symbolic. Let's take a closer look at some standard notation. Here's a simple canon written by Antonio Salieri, who was a contemporary of Mozart's. I'm gonna sing a bit of the melody, and as I do, I'm going to trace the melody with a highlighter. Watch what happens. Viva, viva la bottiglia, viva, viva l'allegria, non più bella compagnia nel gran mondo non si da. If I were to continue to draw, uh, sort of connect the dots, of the note heads and then remove the standard notation you can see that standard notation leaves an iconic representation of what the melody sounds like this highlights for us that in music our standard notation while at a symbolic mode of understanding includes aspects of the iconic mode of understanding by showing the music concept as it seems. Pitches that are low are low on the staff and pitches that are high are high on the staff. Here's another example of the symbolic mode of understanding for music. Here we use notation, sometimes referred to as stick notation. Like standard notation, the rhythms are shown. We have bar lines, we have time signatures. But instead of a staff used to show pitch, we use the solfege syllables below. A comma is shown to indicate that this pitch is below do, and an apostrophe is used to show that this pitch is above this do. I'll sing a little bit of it. La, do, mi, la, di, do, 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 di, la, si. As we have seen, standard notation utilizes the iconic mode as well in that pitches are notated the way they seem and rhythms are notated spatially to indicate the way they seem. For example, let's take a look at these rhythms. Here's what we mean by symbols for rhythm, also utilizing the iconic mode of understanding. Rhythm is about duration. And when the distance between rhythms doesn't reflect the thing as it seems, or in this case, the durations as they sound, it makes it very hard to read. For our purposes, in applying Bruner's theory of modes of understanding, 
we will consider all standard notation and stick notation to be at the symbolic level of understanding. We recognize that music uses a symbol system that has elements of the iconic mode, which language and math do not. Let's review. Bruner's three modes of understanding are inactive, iconic, and symbolic. The inactive mode of understanding involves the skills of singing, moving, playing, and responding to musical sounds in a way that demonstrates knowledge of music concepts. The iconic mode of understanding is represented through visual and auditory icons. These are images or sounds that we use to represent specific music concepts. And finally, the symbolic mode of understanding. These are abstract symbols. In music, we will consider all standard notation and other symbols that abstractly represent musical sounds as the symbolic mode of understanding. and no staff.